Hello and welcome to my Divinity Original Sin 2 video. This is the Pyrokinetic Tier List. Um, a little bit of a tricky one and I'm pretty sure there's going to be more controversy over this tier list rather than any of the other ones. Um, but I'm pretty sure the two skills at the top won't be included in that controversy because I do think that both skills in their own right is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Sparkmaster, relatively low investments. It's an it's uh it's not an aura as such, but it can be cast on multiple party members. The damage is absolutely absurd. The amount of AoE damage this skill is capable of giving is out of this world. Absolutely amazing skill. And quite similarly, we have the mass traps. The damage it's capable of unleashing in an AoE area, again, is absolutely phenomenal. Both skills just absolutely wrecking balls in different ways. Now these skills I think are in a very solid position as well. Again this is the original version of the mass traps but it still does extremely good damage for one AP and again relatively low economy. Uh, it's an excellent skill to to have and good range, good damage, low AP cost. What more can you want? Then we have the two buffs, peace of mind and haste. Haste starts off stronger. It does. It, I mean, it is what it says on the tin for the entire game. Extra mobility when moving, extra AP in the long run, wonderful supportive skill. And you have peace of mind that scales much better later into the game, provides damage, critical chance, and initiative. Now, for me, this belongs here for sure. 250% physical damage in comparison to the bloated corpse that is 200% but the difference is that the corpse has the mobility difference this one you have to take as it comes or cheese but personally I don't like to cheese so I think this is the spot for it now obviously a mass corpse explosion there's obviously times where damage can be absolutely to the extreme but usually in order for this to be achieved there needs to be a, a degree or a large degree of setup again not my style but the option is potentially there the downside to this skill though is that if you're not one of these people that like to set up a hundred corpses corpses uh, in a pile and kind of take things as it comes as not to cheese um, it's not always easy to find the right time to use this because you could end up doing some severe damage to your own party so it's a little bit more difficult to use but the potential is um, super super good and then we have this flaming crescendo which funny enough works really well with the bloated corpse now for 1 AP the damage you get here 175% is, is very 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 good and it's the reason why I put it so high
so I'm just reading this a second. The buffs and debuffs cooldown will not go down, so if there's dialogue before a fight, you can have second party members stack as much of this as you want on them. Yeah, that doesn't really sound like something I want to do. But here's here's the combo. Explodes deal massive mix damage. So ideal for mix parties. <coughs> but nevertheless, incredible skill. Now I'm not gonna lie, I found it a little bit difficult to rate these two skills for different reasons but fireball first and foremost I believe is the it's a relatively large circle for AoE and I think it does a hundred percent fire damage so it's just a standard attack really Uh, but that's good large AOE, so perhaps we'll bring it down to here. Maybe we bring it down to here. So, I'm going back to the other epic skills. We've got Epidemic of Fire, and we have the Meteor Shower. Now, this is better for when enemies are in a circle. This works great for that situation, but it also has a great use when enemies are sort of connected and in a line it will end up reaching distances, which is pretty insane. Um, so let's just look into this a little bit more. So it's 150%, but then it also applies Necrofire, which is pretty damaging, passively. But 150% per one. So that could potentially do 650% over all enemies, which is pretty decent. But, yeah, the difficulty I'm having is where to place it, and I think for the cost of it, etc. Comparison to everything else here, I find it quite hard to put on par with this sort of stuff. I mean, let's just um, take a look. Uh, we've got, uh, let's just take the single mass trap for example. That uh, single throwing trap. 130 for 1 AP. The mass one. One source point, three, 130 per one. So that's potentially 520 for that in one area. Whereas the advantage with this, it can stretch for a longer distance. So I suppose it's really, I'm finding this a little bit difficult, I gotta say. The, the damage, okay, so the damage potential of this skill is huge. Three meters, so what's that in terms, of, in terms of the game, like here? Like from here to about there, so like that, that distance. Or perhaps it's larger. So... Again, you're not going to control exactly where they land. You're going to just... It's, I guess it's more about just the the raw output of damage, not necessarily onto a certain target, but just the area. So... I, it's, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, it's a call between going here and here or here and here. It's in between these two brackets in my opinion. It, I would certainly not put them lower. Um, maybe in the future I revise this and maybe I choose 
choose someone like this, I don't know. I, I, I might even come back to it in this video, but for now, they're here. Spark and Wings is just the apprentice to this, only one spark. But again, during the early game, up until you pick the skill up, it's still massive, massive damage. And it's just a, a little warm up, give you a little taster of what Master of Sparks will provide in the future. Ignition. Uh, in terms of just the damage itself, it's not great. But um, I think the, the biggest upside to this skill is typically as a pyromage mage you would be using torturer which really opens up the potential to this skill which is the reason why I put it where it is um, so the major advantage about this skill and torture is that it's quite a large radius of, ig of ignition and with that you can set the enemies burning which will increase your fire damage to all those targets so it's always really nice to start off all th every fight with this on board to increase your damage so that's why it gets placed so So I've already I've already discussed fireball. The the AO range is really really nice. The, the range of the attack is also really nice, um, but it's just pretty much a standard damage. So I can't really place it any higher than here. Now these I'm not entirely sure where to place exactly. We just quickly have a little glance at each of them so we've got supernova so again as you can see the damage here is really really good downside is it damages yourself and nearby teammates so it's a big downside there however if you play around it you could look at adopting fire resistance to reduce the damage you take but again you've got to play sort of around it sort of thing also it kind of requires you to play like a battle mage type style if you're gonna be exploding so it depends on the playstyle of the mage also but the damage there it's, it's very good it's very good damage but just gotta play around it I mean question but you could you could even put it there in terms of the damage so you know I'm, I'm, I'm sort of putting it in between here I think it's a good space because you do have to really apply some fire resistance gear to uh, party members and uh, we got uh, the combustion skill which again potentially can do very good damage I know it's just 75% but typically if you've got uh, one or two members in your party that have tortured most likely they're going to see two free turns of either burning or necrofire so the damage would be quite nice but the downside is that you absorb those those statuses in order to do that extra damage so it's uh, you got to be clever how you use it I suppose You know, you don't want to use your only torture character to put burning, to then use it and then you still got uh, turns left and then your their fire reduction has been removed because you've decided to do extra damage. So I suppose if you use this very cleverly, you can make the most of it, but the downside to negative is that in order to do the extra damage, you have to remove the burning or necro fire. So So I think for the potential damage, it's here, but also because the negative as well, I can't really justify putting it higher. I have Bleed Fire here. It's a very sound, solid skill. Typically used though once the armor is stripped, and it's just there to increase the damage. So it's not a key skill, but it's a key skill to take down enemies quicker. 
whereas a lot of the other skills that we have available here are typically used to to rush down that all important magic armor. Now, some of you might be like, why the hell have you put laser ray so down on the list? And I suppose in another world you could have it here quite easily. And maybe in a way I probably could have it here. But in terms of damage, it's it's equal to fireball. But there is some drawbacks to the laser ray. Laser ray is a skill that uh, you will want to use on a battle mage because if you try to use it with a mage who's on who's looking to get on high ground, keep their distance. You won't actually be able to use it on your enemies. Um, so that's one downside about it. Is it they, they have to, if in order to get the most out of the skill, they have to be in a line also. Whereas fireball is like a nice AoE circle. So that is another advantage of fireball. Fireball you can do it at a distance and at height. More damage. Um, and I'm sure there was something else that I had to say about laser ray. I mean, people say best, but it's not. It's 150 for free AP, so it's quite standard. It's quite standard. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, typically used on a battle mage, um, so yeah, for me, it's marked down because this is more accessible, easier to use, easier to use from height, this one, to get the most out of it, you have to have your opponents in a line, so it's a little bit more trickier to use than the fireball, and because you can't use it from height. Fire Whip, pretty standard on the damage front, but a lot of the pyrokinetic skills are AoE, the skill is just single target, pretty decent, it's, it's decent enough damage, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a standard attack, it does blind, burning, it, again, it's not particularly special in my eyes. Shorter range also. And I'm not actually 100% sure, but I'm guessing that uh, you have to be on this, the same level as well. So, there's another drawback to this. Searing daggers. It's a, it's a little bit, it gives me the feeling a little bit like um, Fossil Strike. It's a staple, good, uh, really good for creating surfaces for elemental affinity. Really good again with the whole torturer use as well. But the damage is is quite pitiful to be honest. But I suppose you're not really using it for that reason. So therefore, it's here. Uh, Firebrand, you get it late in the game, the damage it provides is quite poor to be honest. Um, but there is magic party builds that I would, put, I would use this with to be fair. So I don't think it's a great skill but there's still a skill I would, there is, I would use. It, is an aura as well, so it does have that going for it. Downside is it requires free and pyro, so that's quite an investment to be fair. Uh, we've got flaming tongues here, um, kind of works like opportunist, 
so the skill itself works really well with enrage it works really well with sparks um, but it suffers with the same problem opportunist in a way does like you're kind of rely you're kind of relying on no, okay, so you're kind of relying on enemies to move in towards you. Not always going to be used guaranteed. Um, and again, it depends on the playstyle of your party. If you're a party that likes to lock down enemies, there's not really going to be much movement. There's not really going to be much movement uh, towards you. However, however, the one thing it does have going for it, actually I might even consider putting it here, it's sort of like in between, but you can use the likes of never swap, I think even teleport to put enemies in your grasp in order to use it, so if you're doing that in conjunction with the sparks, in conjunction with high crits, this could really get some great value from a skill that only requires one AP to use. Yeah, so it says here, immediately triggers. So to be fair, if you're really clever, if you are really clever and you're utilizing the sparks, or if you're using Enrage to get the crit, this could, for one AP, this could see some really good use. I kind of like the idea of it, to be honest. So yeah, I think this is going to go up a rank. But if it's just a standard use, it's okay. Obviously, this would be like in a magic fire sort of focus party. But yeah, it's even greater with this. It's okay. it's it's probably here without it. But when you are utilizing stuff like that and they're buffed, etc., you know, and if they have say inner demon maybe, or um, or if they are running opportunities and your and your party doesn't really lock down enemies and allow some sort of movement, yeah, this is gonna see see some greatness, see some greatness. And then we have the two sabotage skills, skills I've never used, skills I will never use. I've seen, <sighs> I've seen, uh, for me it's too cheesy to really make, make full use of this skill. Uh, in order to make it work you, it, the combat has to start or before combat you put you put items in there to explode to sabotage them and that's how you do it that sounds far too cheesy for my liking um, if you're not doing that and you're not playing a cheesy kind of play style again it's sort of hit and miss you don't really know what items they have in their backpacks so if you're okay so the truth is with this skill is if you are quite happy to be a little bit cheesy and take the time to put arrows and grenades and whatnot then yeah quite frankly uh, this can go like up here it's it's potentially really strong but if you're like me who doesn't really play with cheese doesn't really bother with that and just goes into a fight with how it is sort of thing then then it's like there's times it's going to be good, times it's going to be absolutely worthless, and if you're investing, what is it, uh, two memory points, I believe it's two memory points, two, two AP, it's kind of, yeah. So, uh, I would say here, even, so, without the cheesiness, I'd probably put it here, because it's sometimes good, sometimes not so good. And again, like I say, it's inconsistent. But as I've already expressed, 
if you are cheesy, you are setting things up, sure, by all means. It can be really, really strong, but because I'm not going to treat it as such, it's going to be here. And this is the weaker version. And like with all skin abilities that require source points, it's not useless, but it's trash because it requires a source point to use. And in my opinion, it's not worth doing so. So there you have it, there's my pyrokinetic tier list. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Positive, negative comments, feel free to get in touch. Um, but until until next time, see you.